22 feet. Lots of room for one so swift of hands and feet as Sugar Ray to navigate in. Sugar Ray with a much better upper body strength than he had in the Olympic Games. He came in at 142 and three quarters. Santor, 138 and three quarters. Sugar Ray, a full-fledged welterweight now, really. Scoring on a five-point must system. No saving by the bell except at the 15th bell, 15th round. And that's not going to be the case tonight, so it'll be the final round, the eighth round. And the three knockdown rule does not exist. This is not a championship fight. Three knockdowns in a round do not automatically end it. And uh, it will only be ended at the discretion of the referee in the event of three knockdowns. So some of the basics for the fight. The fighters using eight ounce gloves. First round action. Sugar Ray, who will probably seek to be pacing himself as he essays the task of going eight rounds for the first time in his professional boxing career. Each fighter had 145 amateur fights. Sugar Ray went into the Olympics well-trained, believe me. And when you go against the Soviet fighters, the Middle European or satellite country fighters and the Cuban fighters, you are going against men of vast experience who don't turn pro in the American sense so that they have the quality of professional fighters without being so categorized. Sugar Ray with a good right lead and a follow-up left. Those quick hands. As quick-handed a young fighter as you'd want to see. Sugar Ray at 21, Santor at 26. Here in the Baltimore Papers, they were saying maybe Dundee overmatched Sugar Ray Leonard because Santor is no step. Far from it. See the time in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. We're into the final minute of round one. But Dundee has a way of liking to break his fighters in tough, yet to be good enough to beat the opponent even though tough. So we'll have to see if Angie made a mistake and overmatched his young fight. First round action. Santor not doing much in this round. The lead's being taken by Sugar Ray. Occasional counter punching by Santor. But down to 20 seconds left in round one. Ten seconds. So we're counting down to the end of round one, at which point we'll have a commercial. Just underway, Sugar Ray Leonard, the black fighter. The white fighter, Frank Santor. First round, perhaps a slight edge to Sugar Ray. Little action, each fighter feeling the other out, but Sugar Ray, the lead fighter, and Sugar Ray connecting with one good combination. Began with a right lead. The referee, incidentally, is Tom Kelly. The judges, Larry Barrett and Joey Bunser, all duly licensed by the Maryland State Athletic Commission. Tom Kelly, a veteran referee in these parts. In Sugar Ray's corner, Angelo Dundee, the famed man behind Muhammad Ali, Davy Jacobs, longtime trainer of Sugar Ray, and Jinx Martin, the assistant trainer. Santora's corner, Dominic Polo, he's the trainer and cut man. Jackie Fletcher, assistant trainer, and Joey Polo, assistant trainer and manager. Sugar Ray with a short right as they broke. Good. Good. Oh, no, he slipped there. He was off balance. But he was jolted back by the Sugar Ray combination. Don't be misled by the roars of these local fans. He was not staggered, not about to go down. Fights and flurries with those quick hands. He learned a lot in Montreal under the coaching of Pat Nappy and Tom Johnson, our Olympic boxing coaches. Learned a lot about lateral movement, how to use a ring. The result is, right now, he's not using the ring. He's got Santor in trouble. He has scored repeatedly with combinations and again got in a good right. Another good right as Santor was back. A good left. Santor is in trouble. Sugar Ray is showing the kind of flash 
the kind of polish, the kind of know-how that he showed in the Maurice Richard Arena and in the Montreal Forum. That was no knockdown. No knockdown. Wait a minute. That's it. No knockdown. Tom Kelly called it right. Slowed the action for a moment. Kelly was off balance and effect, flung off his feet by the fury of Sugar Ray as we're counting down to the end of a truly impressive second round by Sugar Ray Leonard. 15 seconds left in the round. The crowd wants the kill, but Santor has been around. They may be expecting too much too soon. We're going to have to break for a commercial as this round closes down with Sugar Ray on the attack. They're rubbing down Frankie Santor in his corner. He came in a confident fighter because of his experience. But Sugar Ray really whipped him all over the ring in the second round. A tremendous performance from a 21-year-old against a man who's got the experience of Santor and against a man who knocked out Doc McClendon, who went the distance against Duran and against De Jesus. Sugar Ray picks up the action immediately here in the third round. Santor bobbing and weaving much of the time. Now Leonard's got to show that he's got boxing class, that he's got the polish to know how not to expose himself to an opponent he hurt in the second round. He's got to keep fighting his fight. Under the ministrations of Angelo Dundee, he figures to do just that. Santor wanting to get to Sugar Ray, not quite knowing how to do it. Sugar Ray with a wild missing right. He's got to be careful about that from his point of view. Miss a right like that, you leave yourself vulnerable to the opponent. Santor must recapture himself. He survived the fury of Leonard in the second round. Now he's got to get a hold of himself defense Leonard and get in some jabs as he did there and start to make his own lead. That's his task. There is redness in the corner of Santor's left eye. Not blood, but redness. Sugar Ray gets that left in there. Such a quick, darting, flashing left. Sugar Ray moving backwards, using that ring, 22 feet of it. By the way, this ring is not without ring history. Good left. Good quick left jab. Another by Sugar Ray. He gets it in the way the one youthful Ali used to. Again that left. The ring with a ring history. May 25, 1965, St. Dominic's Arena. Good right. Lewiston, Maine. This is the ring where they had the invisible punch. Ali against Liston in the first round when the bewildered referee Joe Walcott kept running around the ring as the count went to about 24 and the late Nat Fleischer, editor and publisher of Ring Magazine, stopped it as a spectator in the corner. Sugar Ray Leonard showing, quite frankly, more than I thought he would show because of his youth, because of his inexperience against a veteran fighter like this. Comparably speaking, that is, a veteran fight. Coming to the end of round three, once again, as we close down the round, we will have a commercial break. We'll be right back. Fourth round action just underway. They've worked over that left corner of Santor's eye. He's got matter over it now. Stop any potential flow of blood. Sugar Ray going right to work with that quick, darting left jab. Straight and strong. Oh, how Sugar Ray's shoulders and upper arms have developed since Montreal. We'd like to alert our local stations that at the end of this round we'll be taking a station break. Now, fourth round action. So far, the fight has been all Sugar Ray Leonard. He started off this way against Willie Rodriguez. Rodriguez started to come back in the fourth round. But Sugar Ray looks to have stamina now that he didn't have in that last professional outing. He's as finely tuned as I've ever seen him. From the box offs for the Olympics at Burlington, Vermont through Montreal. And oh, a staggered by a left. 
No question, Santor was staggered by a left there. And Sugar Ray keeps peppering him with that left. This is a brilliant young fighter. There is no question about it. I realize Santor is not a champion, but he is a tough cookie for a kid this age. And Sugar Ray Leonard is just a brilliant young fighter. One minute and a half left, and this the fourth round. What we have to watch for is Sugar Ray getting arm weary. We're right below Sugar Ray's corner. Angelo Dundee sitting next to us saying, hands up, baby. Let's watch closely for signs of fatigue. Punching himself out. Because Santor has not been flawed yet. Good right lead. That's the right lead that's so, and in combination, lefts and rights. That's the right lead that helped him destroy Valery Lemesov of the Soviet Union. That's the right lead that did so much to undress Aldama in the finals of the Olympics in the junior welterweight classification. How often the right lead is becoming now a key weapon for orthodox fighters, a weapon of surprise, a weapon of power. Sugar Ray has him again. He wants to hold on. Santor is ready to go this time. Sugar Ray pummeling him, again, holding on. Down he goes. This is a knockdown. A mandatory eight down. Tom Kelly checking out the fighter's eyes. Tom Kelly, the referee. Sugar Ray wanting. We'll be back with more of ABC's Wide World of Sports after this word from our local station. The start of round five, the bell just rang. We apologize for that st station break. We had no choice. Committed to it. Under the circumstances, we had to go to it. Santori feverishly worked over between rounds. Sugar Ray coming out for the kill, but I just heard Angelo Dundee tell him exactly what I stated earlier. Don't open yourself up. Fight your fight. Keep fighting. Use that left. And occasionally the right lead that's been so devastating. But fight your fight, keep your arms up. And that's what Sugar Ray is doing right now. Santor in desperate trouble, knocked down in the fourth round, trying to hold himself together, find new moves, but unable to stay away from that flashing left, the quickness of feet. Look at Sugar Ray go after him. You'd think the kid had been around three years, not just 21, with only three professional fights behind him. Some men are born to it. Ali was. This kid seems to be. No knockdown. Flung to the canvas by Sugar Ray, who now has much superior strength. They got up. Dominic Polo got up in Santor's corner as if to say, hey, maybe we've had enough. He thought the fighter was knocked down, but no. We're approaching the minute and a half mark, and this is the fifth round. So far, Sugar Ray has won every round. One knockdown, that in the fourth round. Sugar Ray following, trailing, looking for the opening, but not opening himself up, fighting the way you should fight. As that quick left. The two rights, chopping rights, a missed uppercut, followed by a left. The hands are so quick. A minute left to go in the fifth round. A right uppercut that scored, then a left. It's all Sugar Ray Leonard. Another knockdown from the right. Another knockdown from the right. Santor is in possession of himself, shaking his head. I don't think he dreamed that Sugar Ray Leonard could do this to him. Now Sugar Ray is just cleaning up on him. 30 seconds left to go in the fifth round. To see Sugar Ray with the shuffle. And Santor holding on at the knees. Off balance, ready to fall to the floor. Only courage keeping him up there. Down he goes. This time, maybe down for keeps. Sugar Ray motion to the neutral corner. Referee Tom Kelly resumes the count. It is over. Sugar Ray Leonard has knocked out Frank Santor. Angelo Dundee hugs him. Jubilation in Sugar Ray's face. 
this young man is arriving as a professional fighter. He has shown America this afternoon at a professional level what the latent skills were at the amateur level when he won the gold medal in the Olympics. We're going to have to break for a commercial, but as we follow Sugar Ray Leonard, we'll be right back in Baltimore. All right, we're at ringside. Here's little Sugar Ray Leonard, the little one, and here's the man who fought so brilliantly today, Sugar Ray Leonard. I honestly don't think when you went into this fight, you could pummel Santor. You thought you could pummel Santor the way you did. Well, how, you know, I always had power. Like in Montreal, I hit the, uh, the Cubans, I hit the Polish. They were just in such well conditioned that they took the punishment. But I learned a great deal from this fight. Santor is a good Polish fighter, good seasoned fighter, and I'm waiting for the next fight. What it seems to me you have learned is how to hold yourself together and fight your fight and not get wild when you have the opponent in trouble. Exactly. Well, I'm learning as I'm going along. I feel that when you hurt a man, especially in professional boxing, you can't always underestimate the guy thinking the guy's hurt. Because these guys are very tr tricky and very crafty. That's true, yet you touched on a point a moment ago I want to emphasize. You found fellas like Valery Limasov and Andres Aldama as tough as you found any professional fighters so far, the men you fought in the Olympics. Exactly how I feel that these guys I fought in Montreal are really considered professional because they had all the experience necessary to get in the ring and go six, eight, maybe ten rounds. All right, now Sugar Ray, I want you to take a look at that monitor as we show your first knockdown and your second knockdown. Here it is, call it. Well, how I'm coming to the guy, I'm, I'm taking a fight to him. I hit him with a lot of body shots. You see, I heard him with the right hand, and he was gone there. But uh, the guy was good. I admit that. He is good. Well, he's tough. I really, as I said, didn't think you could do that to him, especially that quickly, but you did it. Now the second knockdown. Okay, well, I'm just working my left jam. I'm throwing a lot of uh, right hands, which I doubled up quite a few times on right hand. I didn't stay close to him because uh, the guy was holding on a lot. Now, you discovered at Montreal the effectiveness of a strong right lead. A surprise on the one hand and power on the other. Well, the right hand is a good punch. It's a very surprising punch because normally fighters leave with the left hand. But the right hand is a very effective punch. You're being cuddled right now by your mother. And, of course, we met her up in Montreal. And, Mrs. Right. Leonard, a great, great fight for so young a fighter as your son. <laughs> Really? Thank you. Angelo, I wonder if you could lean in here for just a moment. I want your analysis. Angelo Dundee, hovering up on the ring apron. Angie, were you surprised by the excellence of Sugar Ray's performance oh, today? It's coming, uh, Howard. Like I told you, each fight has been a proving ground. This was a heck of a test tonight. I enjoyed it. The guy was grabbing him, keeping himself in there. Ray started moving away from him. Ray listens real good. He's a heck of a pro. You did. Caution him not to grow wild after he had Santor in trouble. Told him to set him up, set him up, paint him, make him move into position for the shot. Howard, Ray and I want to present these gloves to you because you've done so much for boxing, and that's sincere and honest. Well, thank you very much. Good luck to you next Thursday night with Muhammad Ali. But this kid in his weight classification looks like he's got the potential to be another one. Good luck to you. Oh, right. Now back from the Baltimore Civic Center to Dave Giles in our studios in New York.